With the release of version 15 of Pulis CAD, you can now model jumpers on structures. This allows for the ability to evaluate clearances from jumpers to structures, ground, and other wires. It also allows you to have a rendering of the jumper and include its material in the Pulis CAD material reporting features. Jumpers include the ahead and back section of wire and up to three idler or jumper strings. Jumpers can be either flexible or rigid, and their cable properties are the same as the start section wire. Flexible jumpers can have their geometry defined by either length or sag of each jumper segment. They are included in the FE sag tension model and have a catenary shaped cable element. Rigid jumpers have their geometry defined by a straight line with up to 10 intermediate points along the jumper to define its shape. They are not part of the FE sag tension analysis and any load from the rigid jumpers are added post analysis. Note that when using the jumper feature it can impact your speed of analysis and requires the use of FE conditions. Another item of note is the accuracy of the model members as real wire in these lengths are neither perfectly flexible or rigid and it doesn't consider rigidity and departure angle at hardware. To place jumpers in Pulis CAD, you will need to first enable the feature by going to Criteria, SAP's Finite Element Sag Tension, and checking the Jumper Options box at the bottom of the dialog. After hitting OK, we can go look at a couple different jumper scenarios and show how they can be accomplished in reports that are available in the program. As far as the structures go, you need to make sure you have set and phase labels assigned to your jumper or idler strings if you wish to string the jumpers to these locations. For structure 6 in this model, you can see that we have some jumper strings attached to the box arm with set and phase labels assigned. One good way to see these locations and numbers in PLS CAD is to go to the Drafting, Show Set and Phase Labels, and the Drafting, show cable attachment points, so it is easier to visualize what you are wishing to connect in the program since the program only renders insulators that have cables connected. Let's look at placing a jumper at the box side of the structure which will go from set 16 to 50 to 51 and end on set 6. To place the jumpers, you can go to Structures, Modify, and select the Jumpers button at the bottom of the dialog box, which brings up the Jumper Configuration table. First in the table, you need to pick the type of jumper you wish to use. A flexible or rigid jumper, as we discussed earlier. For this option, we're going to do a flexible jumper, and then you pick the connections to the different set and phase numbers. With the selection of the four attachments, we'll require the definition of the wire in three pieces. For the first section, from the strain insulator at set 16 phase 1 to the jumper insulator at set 50 phase 1, we will define with 2 feet of sag by entering 2 in the first jumper column. For the second section, we know that the distance of the outside of the box arm is 6.5 feet, so we will add a little extra in and define this section of the jumper with a length of wire by entering a negative 6.75 feet from set 50 phase 1 to set 51 phase 1. And finally, you can assume the same sag for the section from set 51 phase 1 to set 6 phase 2. The other columns in the table allow for the definition of other sections, or if they are rigid type of jumpers, allows you to define the shape of the jumper. The last column is for the stock number you can input to track the material related to the jumper in Pulis CAD's material system. So then you can OK out of the dialog and OK out of the Structures Modify dialog and the jumper will be rendered for the section you defined. Now if you would like to define the other phase jumpers on the outside of the box arm, you can make note of the set and phase numbers you wish to attach to and go to Structures Modify again, hit the Jumpers button, and you could just copy the first row and fill into the next two available rows and just change the set and phase numbers accordingly if everything else is the same. Then after OK now the table and the dialog you will see the rendered jumpers. For the inside of the angle you can also attach jumpers in the same manner as you did for the outside arm, but you will see there is no jumper string. So you can go back to the jumpers table and we know the set numbers are 15 and 5, so we can pick flexible 
and go from set 15 to set 5 with the appropriately selected phases. We'll give these jumpers a sag of 2 feet. Then we can copy and fill as we did previously and just change the set and phases that are selected. Then OK out of the table and dialog and you will see the jumpers rendered. To see the jumpers displayed under different weather conditions, you just need to change the display weather case of the back span that is being connected to the jumper. For example, let's look at the top box arm and display this span under a blown out condition. You'll notice when I select the back span, it also highlights the associated jumper with this span. I select the NESC blowout weather case, and you will see that when displayed with wind from the right, the jumpers will move toward the structure. Jumpers are considered in the Sections Clearances command, such as the Sections Clearances to Ground, if you wish to check the clearance from the display condition to the ground. It is also considered in the Sections Clearances to Structure, which allows for checking of clearances to the surface of the structure. And Sections Clearances Between Sections takes into account the jumper and its clearances to other sections of wire. Also, they are considered in the Lines, Reports, Structure Clearances, and Lines, Reports, Wire Clearances, where you may wish to batch check the clearances. The Lines Report Summary also includes a jumper report that will include the jumpers and their modeled length and connections as input in the table when you define the jumpers. For the last portion of the video, we are going to define some rigid jumpers on a distribution dead-end crossing. For this example, we are going to jumper over the arm without any pin-type insulators as jumpers. This example will also show how having these modeled will allow for clearance checks when crossing under other spans. First, make note of the set numbers being used on the structure, which are 21, 31, 27, and 37. So as we did previously, go to the Structures Modify command and select the structure and then the Jumpers button to bring up the Jumper Configurations table. For this jumper, we are going to pick the Rigid Vert option, which means the jumper will be closer to the vertical plane between the attachments. If you had a structure where the jumper is closer to being in the horizontal plane, you would pick the Rigid Horizontal option. So for the first connection, we're going to go from set 21 phase 1 to set 31 phase 1. Then you will go to the jumper connection 1 column to define the jumper shape. In this case, you will define the different points along the jumper based on the fraction of the cord between the attachments you're selecting. As noted in the header of the column, these values will be between 0 and 1. For this example, let's break it up into eighths. So input values from 0 to 1 in increments of 0 0.125, and you will leave the 0 and 1 out since these represent the end and beginning of the jumper. I can input just the first two fractions, and then use the copy and pattern fill down to populate the remaining values. Next, you must decide the height you want at each of these attachments. The numbers I wish to use for this structure would be from 0 0.66 to 1 feet tall above the cord. This would mean at the middle of the jumper with a fraction of 0.5, my jumper would be one foot above the attachments at each end. If I wish to move the jumper outside the vertical plane defined by the attachments, I could also use the Y column to move the jumper so it's strictly not in this plane. For this example, we'll just leave it in the vertical plane. After inputting these values, you can hit OK and then OK out of the table in dialog and you will see your rigid jumper. You can add more points for the definition of the jumper if you would like, or you can go back into the jumper table to change values if after viewing the jumper you feel it needs modification. To place the other jumpers, you can revisit the jumper configuration table, and as we had done before, we can copy and fill to populate the other rows in the table and just change the selected sets and phases. Then just OK out of the table in the dialogs and you will see your jumpers. 
Now to see how the jumpers would influence your clearance when crossing under another span, you can go to Sections, Clearances, Between Sections, and you can pick the blue conductor where the distribution crossing has occurred, and then select the 24 kV Linux conductor from the list, and you will see how the minimum clearance to the crossing is controlled by the distance to the jumpers. As you can see, the new jumper features in Pulis Cab will be able to help you with your future projects and designs. If you would like to learn more information about our software, you can see our website at www.palwine.com. If you would like some information about our software, you can contact us directly at info at palwine.com. And finally, if you would like to purchase our software, you can contact our sales team directly at sales at palwine.com. We look forward to hearing from you soon.